Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com and today we are in round three of the 2016 Candidates Tournament race for the World Championship. Winner of this tournament gets to play Magnus Carlsen in November for the crown. Our competitors in round three, White's going to be played by Topolov. Had kind of a rough start. Round one against Vishinan, just way out prepared. Uh, Vishinan went on to take that one. Uh, and then in round two, got a draw. Now this is the first game of this 14 round series that he has the white pieces. So look to really bounce back here. His opponent today is going to be Levon Aronian, who has two draws so far in the tournament. And Topolov starts out with pawn to c4. And it's kind of interesting. You don't see the English opening uh, that often, uh, especially from Topolov. But what what is interesting to note is the last time these players faced off, December 2015, so just a few months ago in the London Chess Classic, the only game that Levon Aronian won was against Topolov, and he played the English Opening And so a lot of the preparation that goes into these tournaments is for specific players. And no doubt that Topolov remembers that game. Uh, and he's been thinking about different positions in that board state. Uh, and so he came prepared. This is the first time that he's got to play the white pieces. And so definitely looking for him to use this. Uh, maybe some secret sauce and one variation that he has here. But uh, the English opening against Levon Aronian, we'll go ahead and get into it. After pawn to c4, we see knight f6, knight to c3, pawn here to e5, uh, knight to f3, knight here to c6. So uh, back in December, Le the London Chess Classic, we had a three-night game. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to see the four-night game. Now, Levon Aronian didn't have to play knight c6. He had some other options. If you kind of look at it, pawn to e4 does look somewhat tempting, although it's really not as good as it looks. Knight g5, all of a sudden, both of these knights attacking this pawn here on e4. Really no strong way for black to really deal with this. Uh, but decided to go ahead and play knight c6. Pawn here, g3, getting ready to Fianchesio on the king side. Bishop b4. Bishop here to g2, Fanchetto on the king side. Castle on the king side, knight d5. Somewhat interesting move. Usually you're going to see castle on the king side for white. Just kind of hang this knight on c3. But decides to go ahead and play a little bit interesting move. Knight d5. Now pawn to e4. It's a little bit different now because if the knight were to come to g5, there's no longer two knights attacking this. Now we could just see the knight take on d5. We can see the pawn recapture. All of a sudden, the queen comes down here to g5 take. Pawn captures here. Pawn takes here on c6. All of a sudden, black's got a pretty good spot here. This bishop's kind of tied down. Can't really do anything because of the pawns. This pawn can't move. We would really like to. Uh, it's kind of awkward for this king to go anywhere. Uh, if the bishop does take up here on e4, then all of a sudden, this bishop can come to h3. Uh, and this is even worse for white now. He really can't castle on the king side, just applying a lot of pressure on the board. If he does try pawn a3, trying to kick this bishop back, bishop here to a5. Uh, if he were to push forward, which he, you know he probably wouldn't because this is a bad move, but just so y'all can kind of see, pawn up here, b4, all of a sudden queen to e5 is just devastating, attacking both the bishop and the rook on a1. So all in all, not very good at all. So as we come back here, uh, we can definitely see that the knight's coming there to g5. No longer really a viable option. So we see knight h4, pawn here to d6, just opening up the door for the light square bishop to get involved into the game. Knight back here, b4, knight capturing here on b4, pawn a3, forcing the knight back, knight to c6, pawn here to d3, pawn here to d5. And now's where it, it kind of gets a little interesting on the board. Up until this point, Topolov, it looks like he's been pretty prepared for this opening. He's had a few months. They've had the schedule out. He knew who, who he was playing in round three. Uh, I've kind of been waiting for it to see how he was going to come out the blocks after his loss in the London Chess Classic. So he knows this position very well. He decided to go ahead and castle on the king side. I don't really like it that well. It allows your opponent to kind of dictate the tone of the game. I would have much rather just see pawn takes here on e4 pawn's going to recapture e4 bishop here to g5 white's got a pretty aggressive stance right here if the queens come off the board uh, that's fine on board uh, but instead decides to go ahead and play castle on the king side and after the pawn takes the queen's going to recapture I, I think even if you're going to recapture recapturing with the pawn 
Makes a lot more sense. After a pawn takes on d3, bishop e6, rook e1, threatening this long e file right here. Pawn takes on c4, pawn recaptures, bishop captures. Uh, but if we kind of look at it, it's not terrible uh, for white. All of a sudden, we could play queen c2. Uh, this is threatening both the bishop. And if the bishop moves, uh, then all of a sudden, the bishop can attack on c6. Uh, double pawns here. The queen can... Put a lot of pressure on there. Uh, still not the best. I would have rather just see you know that pawn capture earlier on d4 as we talked about. But uh, all in all, we see the pawn capture here on d3, and then queen takes on d3. The main problem I don't like with queen to d3 is knight's e5 is really tough to deal with. The queen now has to move uh, queen to d4. Now knight takes on c4. And black's up material. Usually, you don't see black gain this much material unless white just has a, a huge attack. But white really doesn't have a huge attack right now. We see pawn up here to e4, bishop e6, holding down the fort here. Both the bishop, queen, and knight are all protecting the square here on d5. Uh, now we see pawn b3 just forcing the knight back. That's fine. We see the knight come back to a5. Uh, now queen over here to a4. Knight c6, that's fine. Rook to d1. And rook to d1 even sa seems a little weird. You know, trying to add more pressure on this square here on d5. But it's just so well protected with the knight, the bishop, and the queen. Uh, this isn't doing a, a whole heck of a lot. I think it would have been a much stronger approach to try, you know, pawn takes on d5 after the knight takes. Then all of a sudden, bishop here to b2. Uh, still down to material, but I, I like this board state more than what we had. So after rook d1, we see knight take on e4, which I'm not really sure if he recognized that his opponent could just take that right now. Uh, and then he plays bishop to b2. Also don't like this. You can say I didn't really like how Topolov started out this game. Bishop here to b2. I think taking here on e4. Uh, the pawn can't recapture right now because the, the queen would fall. So this kind of forces a queen to f6. Uh, so getting some material on board. He can really start to make some headway. He does have the double bishop pair. So he has some options on board. But bishop here to b2. Queen here to e7, uh, pawn up here to b4. If we kind of look at it, black is just dominating. It really hasn't done anything too exciting, but uh, he's up two pawns on board. He controls the center of the board. Both of these double bishop pairs are, this double bishop pair is not really doing too much on Topolov's side. Uh, uh, Aronian's doing a great job of just clogging up every potential. The queen over here on a4 is not really in tandem with any of the other pieces. Uh, you know, this rook is not doing too much, trying to control the center, but doesn't really have any of the support that he needs. So all in all, uh, Topolov has a rough start uh, in black, doing a fairly good job of taking the English Open and his opponent, probably prepared for a long time, uh, and is completely just dominating. We now see black play pawn a6, queen back here to a c2, just attacking the side of the the knight in the center of the board. Pawn f6, rook over here to c1, finally getting that rook involved into the action. Rook here to d8, just putting more defenders on the center of the board. This d5 pawn has been hugely advantageous for black in the center of the board with this outpost here on e4 as well. Bishop f1, rook here to d7, and black's just really trying to improve position and then over time just start to exchange material off the board. Pawn f3, uh, that's fine. Knight here to d6. Rook over here to e1. Queen f7. Bishop here to d3. Opening up the door to attack the square here on h7. Uh, that's fine. Pawn down here to g5. Really nice move. And that only defends the square with the queen and the rook both defending h7. But it also is kind of a counterattack with the pawn forcing this knight on h4 to move. So knight back here to g2. Now knight coming in with c4 attacking this bishop right here. Uh, decides to go ahead and let it slide. So knight takes on b2. Now also attacking this bishop right here. Queen takes. And now bishop down here to h3. Getting ready to exchange with this knight here on g2. After pawn to a4, we see pawn h6. This is kind of one of those questionable moves. Uh, it seemed like Levon Aronian had a, a clear plan. There's no real reason to bring your bishop down here to h3 unless you're just going to exchange it off the board. Uh, he could easily just take right here. Bishop takes on g2, b5, pawn takes on b5, pawn recaptures. 
this is a really good spot. You just move your knight really, really good. Or you could just even move your bishop if you really wanted to. But uh, decides to go and play for, in my opinion, kind of a head-scratcher move of h6. He's still up a m material, but there's just no reason to play down here at h3 if you're not going to take that material. Pawn up here to b5. Pawn takes, pawn recaptures, a knight back here to e7. So it does look like he wants to hold on to that material. Queen over here, f2, knight to f5. Just starting to put all the pressure over here on the king side of the board. Uh, queen to f3, king here to g5, uh, king h1, rook e7. After the exchange on the board, uh, that's fine. Queen to h5. Uh, looks like it's trying to attack this bishop here on h3, but... That almost just forces Levonaronian's hand to go ahead and take that piece here on d2. The, the queen just wasn't doing anything. He has no additional helpers to have any sort of attack. Uh, he's not really representing much of a threat at all as we kind of look at the board state here. Uh, you know, if this pawn wasn't here, he can maybe get past it because he has the bishop right here. Uh, but all in all, the, the queen was kind of a just a wasted move to bring up here to h5 and now it's completely separated from the rest of the board state so after knight to e3 check uh the king comes back here a pawn to f5 uh now queen down here to e2 threatening this knight rook here to f6 uh, this is one of those i think levon Rodin could have played a little bit better uh this knight is protected by the queen right here but would really like to get the queen involved into the attack it is the strongest piece we are now in the end game you don't want your most important piece just playing defense duty uh, pawn to d4 seems like the the clear winner can't be chased off it's on a dark square light square bishop can't make it go anywhere uh you know if your opponent wants to give up one of his big pieces to get this knight removed that's fine but this is probably the best outpost that he could ever come up with on this board state now his queen can kind of roam free do whatever he wants to his rook can get involved into the game so uh while he's still completely dominating his opponent i do think d4 is a much better play in this position but decides to go and play rook f6 Queen here to a b2, just pinning down this rook to the king. Uh, that's no problem. We'll see the pawn take after the pawn takes king to h7. It doesn't really matter. This queen's still protecting this rook, so that is fine as well. King h1, queen g7, queen e2. Now pawn to d4. So uh, he did eventually find it, uh, and this is completely fine. Uh, he does want to get that queen involved into the game, as we talked about. Uh, queen f3. C6. He had a lot of ways that he could have gone about this. Rook to B6. That was fine as well. But decides to go ahead and stop the attack here. Both the queen and the the pawn uh, were kind of ganging up on these light squares. So uh, after the exchange on board, the rook is now protecting this pawn as well. So Black's being both aggressive and still holding down the fort uh, with his defenses very nicely. Pawn H3. A rook here to G6. A rook to B1. Rook down here to g3, forcing the queen to move. Queen h5, not doing a whole lot. Uh, queen d7, king up here to h2. Now the attack with the defense from this knight. It's just such a good place uh, for that knight. Uh, king here to h1, uh, and then queen down here, d5, getting ready for a discovered attack. There's no place the king can really move here, and then after the rook moves, there is going to be a discovered attack. So the rook can just kind of gobble up any material if he wants to. He could come over here to d2. Uh, he could even come up here to g5. The pawn can't take it. He's going to have to play defense. Uh, all in all, just completely lost calls for white and it even got worse and worse towards the end of the game. So congratulations. Uh, even though sometimes players don't play well, I always like to give props to the winner. So Levon Aronian playing the black pieces uh, against a tough opponent uh, always, always feels good uh, to get the win as a black pieces. So a uh, total of having a, a rough start to the tournament. Losing two of the first three rounds uh, is going to be tough to make up, to be honest. Uh, he's a very strong player, so it's surprising to see him uh, play this poorly. But hopefully he has a good rest of the tournament. He can kind of bounce back, and we have him near the, the top of the leaderboard. But for the fans out there cheering for him, Unfortunately, he is not doing so well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this game. Uh, really good defense from Levon Aronian, and I'll see you guys in the next one.